It is February the 11th, 2023, and you are listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Back after a short break, I'm Chris, this is Adrian, and Jeremiah. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello, hello. Yes. Sorry there was a short break, listeners. That was primarily my fault in the, um I ended up in a situation last week where I couldn't make the recording and it was only going to be me and Jeremiah anyway. And so it all fell apart. So uh, very this sorry is, about this that. This is what we call life happening. Life did happen to me last Saturday, yes. actually. <laughs> and that caused me to miss the recording slot. Um, uh, so apologies. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's it okay. was a welcome break for me. <laughs> good good yeah some some people here do have actual work to do um so let us see we have an episode um this has been this has been in the in in our in our shared document for a couple of weeks now and uh it's about tabletop photography what is the future of tabletop well let's look at current affairs first why why is it even in our uh in our plan to talk about tabletop photography Oh, well, that's well, quite straightforward. This is one of my blatant attempts to get professional advice from you guys uh, <laughs> through the power of podcasting. Um, so th there's no secrets here. You know, it's just that I, I am uh, deep, deep into a, a challenge of tabletop photography, more on that in a moment. And you know, the reason for wanting to talk about it is because, you know, I, wh why wouldn't you talk to your photography buddies about your photography stuff? <laughs> so this is a cry for help pretty much oh always <laughs> i'll take all the help i can get <laughs> it's a whole podcasting thing like the whole not just a yes, big, the one big the cry only for requisite uh for tabletop photography is actually a table and a camera yes. and yes. by the way a camera nowadays not that we're going to be talking a lot about ai but a camera is <laughs> not necessarily okay wait 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 ai <laughs> created uh photography is not photography we should we should keep that line no uh yeah, yeah. There's been I, I I had read just in passing that uh, some fantastic uh, image <laughs> of a surfer won a photography contest and then the of course the creators course. said oh, I didn't all right <laughs> be, be, before before everybody everybody turns off the podcast we want to talk about actual photography yeah now this do. is real world stuff there is definitely and a tables. real table. There's definitely a real table. And, and a camera a and a lens. There's okay, a camera so and a lens and lighting film. and light stands and right. sandbags and... Uh, all of that. Yeah, all so, of that stuff. So we, we have all done some form of tabletop photography and we have a few examples to show. So this is, this is probably going to be a quite visual episode. Um, video link is in the show notes. Um, and and there, the, the one thing that I noticed when... The three of us independently tossed some of our uh, f photos into our shared album, which, by the way, everyone who's listening to this can just open up tfttf.com slash tfphotos. It's in the show notes and, um, and, and watch along. Uh, all the three of us have three very different kinds of tabletop photography that we or different examples of tabletop photography that we provided. Um, the, and, and, and I think that's the first thing to talk about, the 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 aim the goal of of what your tabletop photography is for so adrian you uh did a project where you're trying to sell something yeah well i think i've mentioned on the podcast before that uh my good wife uh, emma uh has opened an etsy store recently uh and so what we're collaborating on because it is because she's doing all the design work and all the crafting and the product making and stuff like that and, and i'm providing technical support on the photography side so so my mission here uh, my brief is to create tabletop photography uh, that makes sense on a retail platform uh specifically etsy um and there are um, it's not so much that there are rules, but there are there are a, sense, a whole set of good practices for, for the photography uh, and how you how you uh, market and sell your products. Mm -hmm. So this this is both a creative and a technical exercise uh, for us. Okay, Can I ask so you, uh, sure, have go ahead. you have you tried any of the um, new iPhone? Um, apps, which basically you snap a, pi a picture, it removes all the background and, ah, yes. and just 
Boom. Um, so so more on that in a minute. Yes. So the teaser here is that um, uh, part of getting this right is that there is a modern app enabled workflow, definitely, uh, that, that complements the, you know, the uh, not mechanical nature of the photography, but the, the more physical nature of the photography mm. itself, um, particularly the app Canva. But more on that in a bit, actually, which is a really interesting one. So, okay, so good. So, so um, your 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 pictures are the, um, the the ones that help, or that are supposed to help sell a product. Yep. Um, then there is Jeremiah's, which is, well, <laughs> art. More 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 later. <laughs> it's art. Um, and then the ones that I put in the album are um, pictures from from a book that we wrote which are in the book to illustrate things so um they're not necessarily there to sell something but more to show something and can i can i describe both uh both of your images as sure. a form of what we used to call catalog photography yes mm -hmm. yeah yes um, pretty, pretty much yes and uh, uh one thing that adrian uh, you certainly have noticed which um Here's a photo on the screen right now of this table full of um, thoughtlessly tossed I bet it's film not. canisters <laughs> and, and and boxes of film. This is a this is a this is a whole table full of film, because the book is about film photography and um, the 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 setting up of that shot took maybe an hour. Yeah, because to get it to the point where it looks like it has just well it's it's random um that was such a concerted effort to get it to exactly that point and um it, this was this was this was moving boxes this was putting blue tack behind things so they would stick where they are they wouldn't roll away this was uh, wow, to get okay. the angles right and the reflections right so um you have certainly noticed that with your photos to make it look kind of nonchalant kind of yeah, yeah just put this on a table yes it takes work it, would cer you guys, it certainly does would you guys agree that the in in light of the kind of of uh recording images in terms of that kind of catalog that your major enemy are shadows uh, shadows and reflections that's the, yeah. the, the 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 more reflective something is the more you will actually take Struggle. a picture picture of your light sources so yes. um it, you, you, this is this is one of the most important things when you have reflective things uh, to get the not to hide the light sources but to use them in the right way to shape them in the right way to use the right size of i don't know i i have a, i have a like a a four by four foot sail kind of thing that i uh, have ropes on and this goes to that wall and this goes to that wall just to have a big white surface that then gets lit from a, from behind with the light kind of a big softbox thing I so remember, that i that i can yeah. shape shape a certain reflection in a certain way i remember doing a, a commercial for nikon or as you guys say nikon um uh it, it was quite a while ago i remember val kilmer was just it, it was him and the camera on a hmm. white surface, that was the objective. And in order to get this as flat and clear, because directly reflected to tabletop, we ended up shooting in a massive studio with a massive cove because, again, we used to conceal our light so sources to make the white background. And this is before... Not before rotoscoping, but if we had to rotoscope or, or, or replace or, you know, finagle the, the shadows and the actors, it would have been quite expensive. So we just had to separate the subject, i.e. the actor, from the background, pull it way forward, light the background, light the foreground, and make sure that the combination thereof in terms of shadows or crossing, distracting, became not exactly flat lighting, but modeled in such a subtle way. And for such a simple image, person on white, 
it was absolutely staggeringly, um, I don't want to say complicated, but time consuming. Uh, I can well as, imagine. As Chris just, just uh, indicated for his randomness nope. of throwing I've, things down. It, the, the randomness is, is, is very well planned in some of these shots. And um, the, the, the cove that you talk about, I was in one where they shoot or where they used to shoot cars. So there was this yeah, massive to. softbox. We're talking sure. 20, 20 by yeah. five uh, foot size thing hanging off the ceiling on ropes on 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 like i think it was even like a motorized lowering yes. and stuff yeah and, they're, and the, they're probably automated uh, the more modern it's it, it just crazy today that stuff is all rendered but uh it used to be um yeah a huge bay that you drive a, that you can drive a truck into and that kind of so, stuff yeah so. a challenge for viewers now um when you look at a typical car commercial See if you can identify the fact that most probably the car that you're looking at is a complete AI rendered vehicle, skinned and lit, and your background most often is the same. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's very, very different than hauling around multiple vehicles, a huge cleaning crew, massive amounts of trucks, moving it to a location, and now you do it on your desktop. And... and uh, I, when I made commercials, I kind of, I was happy I got I got out of shooting car commercials before this descended. Yeah, you know, you know the thing with a car is it is one big reflection. That Correct. is the yeah. big point. Uh, the big point because you have this highly polished polished yeah. thing. It's a the car is a mirror. Yes, so uh, you will the the light source will be there. It will be in the picture for sure. So you better have one that. Doesn't look like a, like a, a softbox or an umbrella yeah, your or mirror something. should be Death Valley or yes. <laughs> the desert or yes. the forest. That that's uh, your best reflective. Another thing that I um, when when I started doing these things um, that I stumbled across was the cleanup because mm -hmm. yeah. because you you end up seeing every little speck of dust in these sure. photos and. Uh, and uh, if you, if you if you don't take great care of making sure it's dusted off and it's no blemishes on whatever you want to shoot, uh, if you don't take great care, then oh hallelujah, there's digital uh, ways to <laughs> take stuff out. But I've been, I I've, I've I I remember this one picture of an old lens, which was dusty and it didn't. It wasn't apparent when I shot it, and then in the book, when I, when I finished that one, I think I took an hour to clone out individual specks of dust. Yeah, gets a lot more expensive when you're shooting, uh, for example, a McDonald's commercial oh, that close up of a hamburger or, or or something like that. <laughs> of, you know, where they're pasting the sesame seeds on it. Yeah, and, you, you know, need the whoops. hero, the hero <laughs> bun, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's all constructed, and so. Uh, circling back to tabletop, you have to create an illusion of construct to make it appear to be simple and natural. Yes. Uh, and, and, you know, that, that e even in something as simple as these, um, what I would consult, products, the, the, these are they made of wood or, or they are yeah they're wood, they're wood blocks uh, decorated yes but to a, yeah achieve a the form the texture the size the scale all of these things have to be considered because if you just shot it without scale nobody would know if they're like three feet or two inches right yeah the, I mean, so, the, so that one of the shots that yeah there are a set of standard shots that it is good practice to have in an etsy store and one of them is is one that shows the scale another is a lifestyle shot another there is a what they call a catalog shot which is also a studio shot which is simply the product on a white background so there so there there are there are certain key formulas for composition that you need to that, that you need to hit um and uh you know it, it's it's uh, it, it's quite it's quite challenging i did make i took i took the liberty of making in our show notes a, a little list of the things 
because uh, it is which is not really a little list but it is the the long list of little things that really do matter and and make a difference um and you know just just uh, they're in no particular order other than the order they came out of my head to be honest but just you know to, to run through them um things little things that matter uh the finish on the on the foam board so if you're constructing a tabletop set and and you know you're building it with foam boards um if they have a little bit of a shine or a gloss or they're a matte finish all of that can make a, a, a difference a, a, a good difference but a difference um you know then and, you th and the simple question of where is my horizon where does yeah, the where is my foam horizon board and where does sure. it hit the background or, or is there the way, a background or, at all or, yes or having a horizon i i right. have in my little kit uh here in the studio a a i guess it would be considered a small cove you know it could be unfurled it's made of kind of a a, a, a plastic that is uh translucent but uh, non-reflective you could put lights through it or around it um and it, you know, rolls up and packs very, very small, and you just unwind it. Comes with some LEDs that that you can stick on the side to do that, uh, to kind of give it an overall background foreground light. And you can control it on your iPhone. Those LEDs, they do <laughs> hook up. But it was, this was very inexpensive. I just picked it up at the local camera store, and then I found that there was a, um, tech, you know, a, a tech company making one on uh, Kickstarter where the the sides of it were actually um, adjustable in terms of luminosity. In other words, each panel was broken up into maybe six inch squares, but they were invisible. They were behind the kind of uh, seam and you can control the shape through a white background or put a gel in back. Absolutely beautiful. And they were threatening to release it um, just before the Ukraine war, and then I found out that they were, in fact, a Ukrainian company based on based in Kiev, um, and they obviously hit the wall, couldn't manufacture it. A beautiful design in terms of tabletop, uh, but I I said no 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 don't please don't refund my money. Keep the money, use it for your your purposes and. God knows whatever happened to them. Um, hopefully, they they will survive and flourish should this mm -hmm. conflict end um, soon. But but there are all kinds of innovations in terms of lighting. Um, Lume is something I, I I recommend to anybody interested in that. They make all manner of small focusable Fresnel. They're like a studio system, but the lights are. <laughs> Minuscule. I'm just holding her two or three inches, um, and and they they charge by uh, USB and and are uh, dimmable and are really effective in creating and controlling light in a small space. It's interesting the the whole lighting because when you're shooting small things, then your lights also. <laughs> unless it's like a very mirrored mirrored kind of surface, your lights also don't have to be that big. Yeah, it's it's we've uh, it's it's interesting that it reminds me, Jeremiah. There's a company called Adapter Lux who do a load mm -hmm. of thing, uh, lighting systems for really tiny objects. Uh, unfortunately, um, ours are a bit bigger than that. Yeah, you know, I've been floating a four foot octa box over the table um, to you know to 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 light uh, and to to make sure that the light is soft. And you talked about shadows earlier on. Yes, getting the shadows right or removing them from where you don't want them is is quite a trick. And I tried different things. I tried, you know, I tried uh, yeah, just just a range of different things. But eventually I thought, OK, we've got a reasonably small product here. You know, it, um, it's not much bigger than a six by four inch photograph. Right. But it's a, a wooden block um, uh, for this particular set. I've got other things to shoot which are different. But uh, this particular set wasn't too big. And we were able to create with foam boards, sometimes with wallpaper pasted on them to give a texture or, or a floor. I think one of them has floor tiles to give a sort of marbled countertop effect. So we just bought some cheap, marble, uh, cheap marbled floor tiles and stuck those to some foam board. And that becomes the floor of your, your set there, uh, or the, the, which is supposed to look somewhat like, a, I guess, a fresh kitchen tabletop or some kind of domestic you know, set so we've been set building uh we've been working out the technical challenges with the light 
uh what else oh, all, all sorts of stuff um focal length you think focal length would be fairly easy right I think okay i've got a reasonably small set so i want a reasonably <laughs> long uh, not long long but a, a reasonably zoomed in focal length so it's not too wide and i show the edges of my set but there's way more to it than that because if you've got something if you've got to have something that's a bit in the background but it needs to be you need to manage the the depth of field and the out of focus nature of the background not too blurry but blurry enough that it doesn't detract from the product you've got uh and then if i want to shoot at f4 but my minimum lighting setting means i'm at about f14 right so yeah you end up having to dig in through the draw for an nd filter right so i'm shooting in i'm shooting indoors in the dark with a three stop nd filter on right which <laughs> yeah, just, which you just get, get, which you which you can get away with because you're shooting from a tripod and uh the, Oh uh, well, and when, when the flash really comes in, I mean the expo. I mean the the, the shutters at a two fiftieth. So yeah, but but if you if if you sh it, this, but all of these things need working out through a process, not uh, through a process of trial and error at first. I mean once you get it dialed in, it's it's nice and quick. But you've got to dial in the lighting. You've got to dial in the exposure that is a result of that lighting. Don't, don't forget the color. The, You've got the color. Oh, I did. I stuff. forgot the color. I ran the first batch of photos on auto white balance, and I got them out onto the computer. <laughs> and I was just kicking myself. I was like, "What have I done that for? That's just nuts." So, so then I had to go back and do them all again and get the white balance set in the camera. All of, all of this is perfectly easy to achieve in the camera, but it's technique, right? And it's practice, and it's and you want consistency, especially especially with these kind of photos where they are like the same product, but. Different ones. At least you have you have you had the 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 luxury of lighting and setting up everything once because they're all the same size and you can just swap out the product and then take the other. The other exactly. Photo. So the first yeah, getting the first one of those right, getting that composition right was hard. Getting the lighting right was hard. But yes, I mean, there's yeah, that's why I included a contact sheet in our shared album um because it just you know so so i'm quite pleased with the way it, yeah the consistency tracks across that set of products even to things like you put them up yeah you put a tape marker down on the on the tabletop so you know where to position the product so it's like okay so just just a little bit of masking tape you know and say okay the product needs to be directly aligned to that right in front of it so that you know they're in the same place every time uh and then you can get that consistency across the shot all that sort of stuff that you you, you have to work through um, things like um, balancing the background, the composition of the background. So you need to have it such that the background is in. It looks like it's behind. Yeah, the the and this is just the set dressing. Sort of the 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 props are behind the product. They need to be out of focus, but not too out of focus that you can't recognise what they are. Um, and things like um, uh, yeah, on this picture you're showing here, Chris, uh, you'll notice that things start roughly halfway down. Yeah, in the background, the bottom of the things in the in the background starts roughly halfway down the product. To get that to a place yep. where I was comfortable with it required playing with focal length, the height of the tripod, the angle of the tripod head, yeah, you know, all sorts of stuff, right? Just to get you know uh, lo loads of stuff going on there, and it's just all these little fiddly details, which has been really interesting exercise, but it's is properly that's hard the, that's, work <laughs> that's the life of a product photographer that's what they do all day long finding where to put the horizon in relation to the subject and so on have, have you thought or has your wife thought of a complete uh, opposite catalog like hide it helps <laughs> Bear, <laughs> head Demo down demotivation cover uh, so. uh, Blossom, so, yeah. mm -hmm. well well so so the brand values are, so the shop the store is called lift me up crafts and the idea is it's it's just little decorative things uh or some of them not quite so little actually but that that can just cheer you up when you look at them right and and that's that's the idea behind it so uh, so totally negative <laughs> wouldn't work totally then, negative no <laughs> and then jeremiah we'll comes that. in and, and gives us gives us a piece of coal or whatever that yeah, is. No, it's, no, a it's a moon it's oh it's a moon okay it's a moon, moon. But, it's clearly a moon um, Moves. you know so, just, uh, um, yeah I, I, I shot this with a six inch model of the moon um there you go a beautiful model and uh you know lit it did very, you commission very, that or did you just buy that somewhere um i didn't well half and half uh the, there was somebody who who was making them to sell and by order it wasn't expensive it looks very I, detailed yeah it's very very detailed it's very very good and uh, 
Yeah, so I, I just did, and, and then threw a, a kind of um, tintype over it, you know, the, I forget what software I ended up using to kind of create the plate look, um, because that kind of image would not have been possible with that clarity, with that technique at that time, and that's sort of the uncanny valley of it. Sure. Um, the uncanny valley is the valley <laughs> that I live in. So. <laughs> So I needed to make it comfortable. Um, one of the things that, that we can discuss is how tabletop photography, say, when I was doing commercials or in the traditional way that you are working and what Chris did for his book, um, how that has circled back to the future of photography and what modern product photographers or creators are doing now. There is a host of software um, won't replace the kind of fiddliness of the studio mechanisms and the light and all of that stuff that you describe, um, usually for commercial purposes, though it can be for artistic purposes too. But the software that's available, I use Lightroom, but I'm sure Luminar and have very, very similar matting purposes that you can really uh, assign, for example, a luminosity mask, which you can pull out the whites or the shadows, push, pull. Uh, you can identify spotting at it. You know, it's very, very easy to correct um, dust motes and all the rest of it using Lightroom, which I do. Um, so the cleanup is much easier. The matting is much easier to get it on a surface. You can change the color of the background simply. You can adjust the color of your product simply too with hue and luminosity mask and color masking. Um, and then, you know, again, moving forward, and this is, this is where product photographers uh, are currently shaking in their boots if they don't learn new techniques, but, um, you know, the, the new AIs like in automobile photography and or commercials, those kinds of renders are being used to render even the most uh, simple product photography. Um, where it gets um, a little more uh, expensive, thereby throwing it back to the photographers, in, is in the composition. Because once you, if you want to really create a perfect render in Maya or a wireframe that is manipulated, that's costly. That that soon it may not be with nerfs and all the rest of it, but um, I I think that we are undergoing an interregnum, a sea change here in how these catalog photographs are taken and rendered. There's there's one one step in between what we are doing, putting things on tables and lighting them, meticulously lighting them and finding the shadows and the reflections. And then the, the, the other end of the spectrum, fully AI generated. Um, there's something in between that I just recently came across. There are robots that do product photography for you. Really? Um, here's here's one like Autry okay. photography systems. So there are machines with like actuators and things in them that uh, you just toss your hand back in that you want to take pictures of and tell it um, take take the and it has turntables and it focuses oh. the camera for you wow. and then it wow. tosses out uh, things into your Lightroom and uh, all you have to do is a tiny little bit of cleanup even though most of that is then already done for you. It's, it's so do they do they have robot set dresses as well and robot stylists? <laughs> um, not quite, not quite. But um, there's like entire fully automated photo cabins that you that you. Um, put a person in and end up with a fashion shot. So it, so it really is it back in, back in the world of small craft maker, you know, online stores, right. <laughs> where none of this stuff is available to us and we just use lights. Um, the, uh, Jeremiah asked earlier on about like apps and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I mentioned the app Canva Canva's I, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not really using it, but I, I'm observing it being used to, to help set up this stuff uh, and process it. It's a really interesting app because it's not like, it's not like something that a photographer would normally think of as a, an image manipulation app. It's not like a Photoshop or a, or a photo editing app. It's kind of part vector graphics, part 
stock imagery and icons it's a part of a partly a, a layout and compositing tool partly image manipulation it's but it's all geared around people who who want to create interesting images of the stuff that they make and yeah and and it's a, it's a really interesting set of tool set a really interesting hybrid tool set based around a use case rather than a, a sort of technical challenge of, of, of image editing so it's it's, re- it's really interesting to to, to see how things get done and it can be yeah, really powerful as well so uh, one of the shots that we were wrestling with the lighting on was that was what the uh, in the world of Etsy they call a studio shot which is just the product on a plain white background and I worked quite hard to get the yeah that's the one Chris I worked quite, worked quite hard to get that working and if you look closely at that image because i deliberately put not the finished image in, into our shared album um there is a, a bit to the to the right hand side of the product there's a bit of a seam where you know um uh, where the the boarding was was um brought together uh there's clearly a shadow we wanted a bit of a shadow but the shadow is coming from the front because this will be an interim shot where i uh, sorry uh, coming from behind the shadow is in front of the product appearing underneath it in the image um, hadn't quite got all the lighting sorted out there and you might notice as well I don't know if it'll come through on the internet is um, there's, a, there's a fall off of light slightly from right to left so whereas the right hand side is pretty much pure white the left hand side is not um, and all of that was uh, you know to get it to be that good with the kit that I have available at home and my relative of course lack of, of experience um, took quite a long time and then if you put that shot into canva and you just click the button that says remove background all of that goes away and then you click another background that says add drop shadow and it gives you options for angle and opacity and distance from a product and all that sort of thing in terms of a drop shadow and which gives you a position that's perfectly acceptable for online commerce sites um, so, so that catalogue look. So, yeah, fantastic that there's robot cabinets. I'd love to have one of those, but probably yeah. beyond our justification in the business case for the shop at the moment. Um, the 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 thing is, that depending on what you need. I mean, here's here's an example of a shot that um, was for a book, and it it blends into 100% white around the edges, so it fits on a page and it doesn't have a seam it's kind of a seamless one um doing these kind of things that was that was that was challenging the biggest challenge for me was actually this shot hold on i'm bringing it on the screen because i'm shooting white things on a white surface (laughs) and having them show have a separation to the background and still not look too artificial that was a wild effort. <laughs> Pretty technical shot. Uh, yes, Super I technical. Well imagined. Yes. Do you but th- hey. do you think that this kind? I'm talking about for commercial purposes, um, not at home, but for commercial purposes, is there a future for tabletop photography, product photography? I would say yes, and I would say that it's not so much that. Um, the tools uh, uh, you know, are going to go, become all online and everything will be rendered like an Ikea catalog. I would say that in part, it's, it's a cultural thing in the maker community whereby these, th- are, these are individual pieces uh, and you know, no two are the same. Um, you, I mean, you could order you know, two of the same, but they would even in the real world, they'd come out differently. Right. Um, and, you know, it's very much, uh, I'm told the, the culture that, you know, you have to show the actual product and it has to be real it has to look real and so i think um i think there's a cultural thing that's, well, that's at least point. in the maker community that suggests that you know full ai rendering is is, is kind of not it would miss the point it's, it it's be frowned upon but it will it will soon be easily easy enough to just add a bit of artificial dirt and then it will look just <laughs> like put in the flaws do you know what? if somebody a gave me a, if there. somebody gave me a rendered set to just drop these things into if i had a way of uh, i have i had a way of doing a lifelike three-dimensional scan and um and uh yeah uh, and dropping that into a rendered set and playing you know playing with it in there that might be very tempting to be honest I'll throw but it, it might not because part of it is not about at the level that we're working at part part of it is not about 
just the most robust cost effective way of doing it part of mm. it is the enjoyment of doing it as well so. well that's true I, i'll give you an example and those who listen to this know my affection for machine intelligence and rendering that way um as much as i love cameras i love the technology uh, to create imagery as well uh, but I'll give you an example of, I, this is what I believe, of a tabletop genre that I do not believe a, a machine can actually shoot effectively. Um, and it's because that the, uh, the subjective reaction to the image is the most important thing, and that is food photography. I, I do not think a machine can render something delicious because hmm. a, a, a machine does not know what delicious means. Never. It knows what things look like. It knows what a burger, a pizza, a cheese ball, whatever you want to call it. But it does not know the difference, subtle as it may be, between too much steam not enough steam, what kind of, how fluid okay, the cheese you, melt is. You are aware that we are creating a record right now of what you're saying, and in uh, <laughs> two years from now... You, two weeks, Chris, two weeks. Or in two weeks from now, it might be completely <laughs> different. I will eat, no pun intended, my words. So I, th I think tra training will resolve that. Jeremiah, it's just uh, training, labeling data sets, you know, these things, you know, the way that um, when I first played with uh, the original Dali model um, uh, last year, and I forget what the, the, the app was that surfaced it, Chris will remember, I'm sure, um, that it gave you nine Gener generated images and you chose one and it developed that through another round of the algorithm. I forget. Um, Open AI, yeah. Uh, it was it was the it was the Dali model, but I forget which. It was one of one of the things that used their API. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Um, and it would just give you it would just give you uh, yeah a chance to. Uh, I like that one. Run it again, but but based on that one and and refine make it and slightly refine. different. Give me variations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm uh, uh, I'm 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 going to dis respectfully. I'm going to disagree <laughs> with you on that one, Jeremiah. <laughs> hey, well, let's let's, uh, let's we shall see. We we are, there's definitely a very good chance that this topic will resurface here every now and then, probably every. I think so. Show. Well, I tell you, I tell you what. I don't know if it's time to close it off for just just for today. But there's one little tip. I've just one little fun thing that I did. So that contact sheet that I shared um, in the uh, in in our shared album that is generated by an Apple shortcut that I wrote. Mm. Uh, so uh, that was that was just a little bit of fun. It's literally about two lines. It says, "Get the files from the folder, get the images from the files, or arrange them in a grid and save it as one image." Um, uh, and so what I was able to do was just take, in this case, it's a dozen photos, but the number doesn't matter. Um, you could take a number of photos, and you could get you know with in just three seconds or however long it takes you to click on running the shortcut, um, it will give you. A contact sheet so nice. that was a bit of fun nice little programming exercise even though writing f shortcuts is uh, it's just no fun <laughs> well you say that because you're an actual coder right so you no, have no, that it enables a lot of things the interface is horrible that's, that's true there is yeah. that yes the, and there's no debugging of them as well which you drives know, me nuts I, at all. I, I, have you tried to just run it through a uh, chat GPT-3, which is write me a shortcut that <laughs> write me sure. Yeah, I'm not sheet. sure that's how... You can, I, um, so I did that. I did I did query that on GPT, on chat GPT the other day. I said, write me, write me uh, an Apple shortcut for integrating to chat GPT. So to send some text into chat GPT and getting it back um, as using the API. Uh, it gave me some stuff. Anyway, they're not, but but we, I digress. The the point is, is that yeah, again, it's just some of these little, yeah, you know, these amazing tools we have to you know, to us at the moment. I mean, you could take any number of images that you want to give to somebody that you've done some photos for, sure. create a contact sheet in seconds, you know, just automatic. Thing. So, all good fun. All right. So, what have we learned? We encourage people to do this. Most yeah. people have a tabletop. We did an uh, episode on still lives, I think, and. You know, we we reminded everybody that when painters painted still lifes, they just drew from what they had around. 
yeah. moldy yeah, bread. Yeah, pretend, <laughs> crumbling pretend you're pretend you're trying to sell something that's on your desk right now, and yeah, make or it, just that's a nice, that's 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 a nice assignment yeah. actually, Chris, because it, it you're having something like that um, as a proper uh, assignment with with with. And perhaps yeah, inspire people to drive more into it because this stuff isn't a five-minute job. This is, no. this is a, it's a process. It this is, is an yeah. afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, in my case, I wouldn't say many several evenings, afternoons. but but se several yeah, several sessions to get the different shots sorted out, and and there's, uh, there's tons sure. more to do. So we'll my there's lots to learn. In. There's lots instant. to learn. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so so there will be product photography in the future. I think we can agree on that, no matter which way it happens. And if it's more us explaining to the machine what we want or um, just doing it ourselves. Sometimes it's probably still quicker to do it yourself. And you'll learn. Uh, I, I heard Claire Silver, who's a wonderful AI artist, said that AI is like a camera for things that don't exist. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, are we all are we all happy to go to our picks of the week? Absolutely. Sure? All right, then Adrian, let's get yours here. Ah, oh, yeah. A lens. A lens. So a lens. It is a lens. Um, so uh, we did a few weeks ago a show that I jokingly called uh, a Q two for for me, um, and I had bought uh, an old Nikon one camera. Um, I since bought another one and another lens so i think I, I bought i now have two cameras and three lenses um so my pick of the week this week is the equivalent for the nikon one system of the nifty 50 uh it is an f 1.8 18.5 millimeter lens and it's really nice it's just easy to use um and it's uh it it's of course it's quite it's, it's very small because the cameras and the whole system are small with just a one inch sensor and it was fast to focus and it just just worked and so that's my pick of the week because i've just because i've i've been really enjoying it very good very very good um jeremiah you brought us an artist an artist uh in in our discussion about tabletop uh this is someone who again just is photographing flowers in smoke or and steam stunning or... imagery wow um looks like looks like dry ice or something yeah but these yeah, are definitely these gravity are... at play there somewhere isn't there wow yeah i love this Very nice yeah it, it, you know it's like taking pictures of things in aquariums like you know you set up a little fish aquarium and put some colored dye in and light it and drop things in and there's there's something beautiful to learn and capture sort of and the depth nature and it, has, it has a foggy na nature it's oh the colors and everything yeah beautiful. it's just by way of saying that tabletop doesn't can be a lot have... of different things yeah all right and i will take us out of the tabletop photography and put us on a white page which is a website that's called callig calligrapher.ai and it's a little ai based browser based thing that writes things in handwriting and if you've ever tried to get a, like a good handwriting font then you have the problem that the, the, the all the a's look the same and all the e's look the same and so on um, this one writes um the, the future of photography and then it just handwrites in different styles what you want it to write it's it just is, is one line that's all it does you can download it as a vector for use in a project or something you can change the stroke that's width and so on this i, I, I love i really love, love with this little toy <laughs> this is good for personalized thank you notes if, you know, if that, for, for example, or if you need something for a web page, or you know, some some photographers like to put like a handwritten, uh, handwritten name on their photos as a signature, but they but the handwriting sucks, that kind of stuff. So, this one will take care of that. I, I, I'm assuming they on. don't do proper uh, quill pen calligraphy. No, no, no. But it's 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 so That's much coming next week. It's so too. much better of a simulation than any handwriting font that you can even I have had one made from my own handwriting 
uh, ones where you fill out a sheet and scan it that. and send it in, and then you <laughs> I get did that, Chris, you get like your font back up. Fifteen years ago, right? Yeah, Something same, like same that. here. Yeah. But it's not good. Nah. I, mean, I mean, it's just not quite the same. So I want this, but with my own handwriting in there, yeah. and then I'll be happy because my hand my, my handwriting isn't beautiful. No, so. <laughs> Anyway, I think I really like that. I could definitely see myself using that. Oh, it's funny, I've, I've already so used it in years, several projects. So, <laughs> so many years trying to get computers to recognize our handwriting. And now we're saying, no, we don't want that. We want it the other way around. We want to, we want to type stuff in and turn it into handwriting. Well, you know, you know, the whole AI thing is, is pretty much a compression, decompression algorithm of sorts. So, oh, yes, um, in the most massive way. Right? Yes. It starts with a pixel. <laughs> Right. All right, with up. with that, I think we are uh, coming to an end. This was about uh, tabletop photography and how varied it is and how many weird things you can run into. Oh, there's, there's really a lot. Mm. To have there's a go, really everybody. Much. Send us your tabletop photos. Share, yes, them, on the uh, dis uh, share them on the Discord. We, we have a Discord. By the way, we do have a Discord and it's linked in the show notes and uh, that's the right place to share these things. That's the right place to exchange tips and tricks and uh, have us chime in as well. So, yeah, that was it. We are online at thefutureofphotography.com. We have our little... Um, we still do have a Twitter account, TFOB now, and uh, we'll be back soon with more. Until then, everyone, take care. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 